good. Um, so, perhaps we'll start. Um, I today I want to go on to talk to, to you about some of the aspects of syntax in in the in the Nina dialects, uh, and I. Again, I'm really just giving a flavour of some of the things which I personally find very exciting about the, you know, the, the lang- these, these, these uh, dialects. Um, and syntax is an area I'm particularly interested in, um, because often in Semitic languages, grammars of Semitic languages often don't have a very uh, thorough or very detailed um, description of syntax. And um, I think detailed descriptions are very important of syntax because they often show features of the language which are, are not normally known. Now, um, I want to talk about the issue of definiteness. Now, remember, I said that in Aramaic, in Old Aramaic, and those of you who are doing some of the early Aramaic will know that you form a, you, you, there's a definite article which is suffix. So you say. Aved is a, st- a slave. Avda is the slave, right? And um, Malka is the king. But as I was saying to you yesterday, all nouns in Nina ending at, end in the a. And this a has lost its function of a definite article. So, in order to distinguish between definite and indefinite, the Nina Daleks use various new strategies and one of them is to use a the particle ha which is the number one it's the numeral one and they use it as an indefinite article just as we in English say you know a king and, and in English actually historically a a king or a king we say a and a is actually historically the def- the, num- the numeral one is related to it historically. Um, now, I want to the the main point I want to make is that, and it's just to show you how input is important when you're looking at syntax to be to look very carefully at examples in texts because when you're at a syntax of a language, I mean there are different there are different schools of thought about syntax of, of, of language and one school of thought says you you simply ask people questions you know how do you say this how do you say that um, and but the, the, the in my experience the best way to understand syntax is to search through corpora of text and in my own work I've created various corpora I, I've done recordings of several hours of of uh, of, of people speaking and transcribe them, which is a very long process, I can tell you, <laughs> and then to see how how constructions are used within corpora. That, that's really the only way to understand how syntax works. So the main point is that if we start to look at how this ha is used, like the, the formula ha malka is the, is a king, the the. The, the thing that the most dangerous thing to do with syntax is to, is to constantly assume that that if, if Hamalka can mean in English a king in some context <coughs> one shouldn't make the assumption that a, 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 any kind of context where English uses an indefinite article you can use ha in Nina and this is in, in the so the point is that ha is used far less often, far less often than a in English, and I think that's that's the an important point. And so what I've done in my own work, I, I've gone through the corpora of texts and look where ha is being used. And um, I'll just very briefly summarise. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of detail which I, I, I can't tell you here, but just to summarise where I found that ha is being used. Essentially, ha is used in the following circumstances. One, when the nominal has what I call a topically prominent referent. That, that is when, particularly at the beginning of a story, you introduce the main character of the story, like, Ithwa Chamalka, there was once a king. 
this is a very frequent way you'd begin a story a folk tale and of course this Malka, this king will be talked about a lot in the story I mean, it is the main point of the story that he will be mentioned lots of time that he is topically prominent and in such cases when, when there's a very important prominent referent introduced at the beginning and in English you would have a, an indefinite article you would typically use Kha Kha Malka so that, that's one of the circumstances um, the uh, also we, into this category falls the use of Kha with the in an adverbial expression it's like you begin often uh, a, a, a story or a, a large section of a story would begin with an adverbial chayoma, which would be one day uh, you know, so you're starting a new episode and of course that yoma the adverbial frame as it were, the, the actual expression of one day, is obviously referring to everything in the whole episode as one day and therefore this is typically chayoma <coughs> with a cha. Um, that's all I get. I get what I get out of people's way. Uh, and another c- c- uh, context where you use ha is if you're contrasting members of a set, like uh, it says, Kimele a farcho, Shkile zorna, Machaya zorna, Bejie hola chagota. Erwa Chagota. Um, so he, he was, Farcho took, also took up the pipe and played pipe music. The young lambs were on one side and the sheep on the other. Virginia Hola Chagota, Erwa Chagota. So the, the, uh, um, lambs one side, the sheep one side so you're contrasting one side with one side and then that's a sort of two contrasted items that you you typically use a cha in such cases Um, that's what I'll uh, um, but um, the uh, uh, a cha is typically omitted when you refer to a a referent that does not play a, a very important part in the text. So he said in this expression, an old this is this is part of a story again, an old man is sitting on a stone. Hanashasawa or a Now the point is that Hanashasawa one this is man old, one old man this old man has some important role in the text he, he's talked about but this kepa is sitting on the kepa on the stone on a stone is an indefinite as no ha because the stone doesn't play any role in the text it's not it's only incidental therefore it's omitted so whereas in English we'd say a stone um, also um, that's all split, split this out also uh, sometimes you can have uh, a series of clauses where a, a referent or a, a, like a, a, a person or in this case a lion an animal is referred to several times like a lion once attacked him he killed the lion but the lion ate his hand so lying is, is, does occur at least three times there's a series of three clauses so it may look as if the line has some kind of what we call durability it is lasting it continues through several clauses so we may suspect that we may expect that for a ha but all of that section is really what we call background in, in, a, in a narrative it's not part of the main narrative it's simply a piece of background information explaining uh, what is actually explaining why the, the main character of the story had, had, had no hand he, he'd lost a hand and so this is explaining how he lost his hand this is background and in this case Aliya is there without the ha so if the section of this te- of the discourse which is 
has the indef which has the indefinite noun is itself all background, then the cha can be omitted. So we see therefore that the cha is not quite like an English indefinite article. Ah, it, it's actually far more uh, conditioned by what we call pragmatic and discourse <coughs> factors, uh, and it's not so grammaticalized as 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 the in, indefinite article. Um, and I think you'll find that with a lot of the usages of, of indefinite and definite markers across various languages, they have different distributions, uh, and therefore it's very you, you when you must always be aware of that that when you you may be you may it may seem as if there's a that there's an absolute equivalence between let's say English indefinite article and the Nina indefinite article, but in fact looking at corpora shows there's not. Uh, perhaps I'll move on to the, the, the next point here now let's not look at something a bit more about the, uh, the syntax of uh, demonstrative pronouns do you remember I said to you yesterday many Nina dialects have three types of demonstrative pronoun they have a they have a two day <coughs> pronoun so they can say this, if this was a book, I mean, the, in the villages they didn't have things like this. <laughs> if could pretend this was a book, you'd say this book near me, that book away from from both me and you, but visible, and that book which I just mentioned, anaphoric, right? And so the anaphoric pronoun which in, in this da in the dialect I'm taking these examples from, Barwa has the form owl in the, in the, in the masculine singular, um, is obviously frequently used to re in, in stories and text to refer back to some item which is, uh, has been mentioned previously. But what's important to note is that um, the, this owl uh, sometimes is used in a context where we typically in English use the definite article the. Um, now, if you know, if I said you know, um, uh, you can. I mean, it's, if you said something like you know, I um, I saw a man this morning. That man is my friend. That, if I'm referring back to the man I've just mentioned in the previous sentence, that is used anaphorically. And very often you'd use ow in that context. However, you can also use ow when you haven't explicitly mentioned something in the previous context, but you've mentioned something associated with it. So here, it says, after she burns me, take the ashes and keep them. Ina, that is simply a, a deictic particle, behold, Ina. Mbather makdali, after she burns me, makdali, this, this is the L suffix, express the object. Al qatma shaklitule, machamitule. That ash, literally, you. Sh you shaklitule. It says you will take it and keep it. Um, but the point is that he hasn't mentioned it, khatma, the ash beforehand. There's no explicit mention. However, it's referred to burning, makdali. So the speaker is assuming, therefore, that if he mentions burning, there must be typically ash associated with burning therefore he's using his owl because he assumes that the hearer will know that somehow have can I know that this ash is or not explicitly mentioned but is being if you like invoked or indirectly um, activated in the mind of the hearer by mentioning burning this is called associative anaphora and in English, you, you can do you you can do this a lot with the definite article. Like um, you could say, I have a house, 
the door is red I mean I haven't mentioned the door before but I mentioned the house and the door is associated with the house but in English crucially I can't say I have a house that door is red I can't use a demonstrative pronoun <coughs> or associative anaphora but I can use a definite article but in Nina you can use the demonstrative for associative anaphora that, that is another example of how you have to be careful of finding exact equivalence between in English and 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 and, um, and Nina. Um, now, however, if this doesn't mean to say that "al" can be used like the English definite article in all cases. Um, the English definite article is a completely developed article in the sense that it can be used also when there's no anaphora in other words I, you could say the sun uh, I could walk in the door and say the sun is bright and without, <coughs> without having mentioned it at all but I can use that definite article because I know you can identify the sun because there's only one sun I mean I know you know which sun I'm talking about uh, but uh, in Nini you can't use the demonstrative in that way so you have to just say shim uh, I see there's a mistake it should be shimsha not shishna shimsha shimsha it's uh, there's a typing error there shimsha um, uh, so that we can see therefore the the, the the demonstrative in Nina has some overlaps with the English definite article in some respects but not but not completely uh, and this differs from Toroyo where in fact the article has developed more into a complete article so you say the sun you say ishimsho you'd actually use a, um, a definite article but um, we'll move on I think actually I'm not going to uh, yeah I'll skip out some of the other, other example now an interesting <coughs> in Balwa and some, se several other Nina dialects, they have an interesting uh, type of construction where they can combine a definite article, uh, sorry, a, a demonstrative anaphoric pronoun, an anaphoric pronoun with an indefinite particle. They can say things like Ocha, right? Ocha. Uh, perhaps we can ignore the rest of those. These are simply Ocha. Ochaha is a simply a, a variant form, but these are just inflections of feminine and plural. Let's say Ocha, which seems a bit strange to say uh, you combine an anaphoric pronoun expressing identifiability, something that you I've mentioned or I have invoked in the previous context, together with an indefinite article, which suggests that it's a newly introduced um, referent, but. These are used in contexts where <coughs> you, I haven't mentioned something in the previous context, but assuming you, it's in your memory. In other words, it's not in the previous context of conversation, or that's the same in the discourse. But but it's in. I'm assuming it's in your memory that we. So, for example, you could say something like, "Do you remember the man who was here?" Like, a week ago, Charit Ochana Tueva Lacha Kam Shabtha. Charit is, I mean, this is the, we call it a progressive form. Chara is the infinitive, and it is in fact a copula, second masculine singular. So, are you remembering? Do you remember? Ochanasha, that man, or the man, we would say, uh, uh, most natural in English. This is the or chat nasha it where were who, which was who was lacha here ham shabtha before a week a week ago. Uh, the point is I haven't mentioned this man just not just in the in the conversation, but I'm assuming that if we met if you met him a week ago, you it will be in your memory. So this is a kind of like anaphora of memory rather anaphora of previous discourse. So that is quite an interesting phenomenon. Which are, uh, I haven't found many uh, for any typological parallels with other languages. Uh, I mean, there probably are, but I, this is one of these 
interesting a- aspects of of the Nina dialects, which are are very unusual. Um, now, in the Jewish Transzab dialects, do you remember those dialects which are the uh, east of the Zab River, spoken by the Jewish communities? They are, are they tend to be, um, converge more with languages in contact. Um, and one way they do this is they actually borrow a Kurdish definite article. In Kurdish, there is a definite article which is a suffix, ake, or actually it's aka in Kurdish. Um, and uh, this uh, um, this is a suffix. And so they so they in Jewish Arabic, for example, the Transab dialect, you say bela is house or could be a house, but bela ke is the house. So the borrowly Kurdish definite article. Interestingly, in the Kurdish dialects you have two forms of this article. You have the basic nominative form is aka, but you have also akai, which is the so-called oblique form, the form which you'd use like um, to express in a kind of like a genitive construction, you know, the the um, the king of the town you would say Akai there but what's happened is that the Nina dialect seems to have borrowed the oblique form Bela K A to C seems to be a contraction of I which is a, uh, a interesting phenomenon um, right uh, now yesterday I mentioned the genitive particle D which occurs in earlier Aramaic as D and Syriac as D and I said in um, in Nina we have uh, this uh, uh, in most Nina dialects this D has turned into a T and it's been suffixed to the head noun so the word for the house of of the king Betit Malka so not be, historically this will be seen like by well it's probably by the de Malka mm-hmm. his house of the king it's actually a, you get this proleptic or anticipatory pronoun in in uh, in, 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 in many um, Aram- early forms of Aramaic but it, essentially to express the house of the king is Betit Malka now um, I just want to look a bit more closely at the use of this construction because if you have an adjective if the, the small house of the king you simply put the the uh, at, at the end of the adjective so you say beta surat malka uh, the small house of the king uh, or if you say have I don't know, the house and the horse of the king, you have a sort of what we now call a, uh, a coordinated <coughs> noun phrase consisting of the house and the horse of the king. If all that would be treated as a, a unit, and you put the tut at the end of the second noun. So beta ususit malka. Uh, these are the forms are simply forms with the genitive suffix betu. Um, his house, uh, um, which I think perhaps well, we, we I don't need to get into those for the time being, but um, yeah. Now, um, sometimes you can actually disconnect this "ut" from the head noun. In these, these, by the way, these examples are from the the dialect of the Christians of Urmi which is I've been working on recently but y- there are some cases where this ut gets disconnected from beta you can say beta ut malka um, now I, this doesn't seem to be simply a a more archaic form it's simply that the ut has become te- is disconnected it's become although originally a suffix betit malka it's it's being disconnected and uh, and, it, and it's uh, uh, to form construction like beta it's um, and um, that is of some significance when we 
start to look at some of these uh, other constructions uh, and we see that in fact this ut or t sometimes ut, ut gets lost if there's a preceding vowel can be can be uh, you moved on to all kinds of different forms for example if you say, if you <laughs> form the genitive suffix isaktu isakta is a ring isaktu his ring you can say his ring of gold isaktu t dava and that t is the um, this genitive particle so that can be added onto a genitive suffix um, and um, I shall skip over that um, yeah I think the main point I want to make is this I, I'm going to sort of try and sum present this in a rather short way uh, but let's go back to the construction with adjectives now earlier we had this construction of beta sura uh, small house but um, if you take an adjective which is a loan word and it doesn't have an, an a ending like the word tamiz is a loan it's, it's, it's found in Kurdish and also in, Iranian, in other Iranian languages Turkish as well clean house beta tamiz, tamiz clean house but if you wanted to say the clean house of my mother perhaps just ignore the second example you can say things like beta tamizit yimmi and put the ut onto the tamiz but the the um, the point I want to make here is that uh, this and this probably may be a bit complicated actually but essentially this ut here is not behaving in the same way as the ut in um, in, in a word like um, betet malka because really what's happening is that in betet malka this ut is a has the status of a suffix which is completely bonded with the noun but it, when you have an adjective it, this is why I'm writing it with these, this equal sign it has the status of what we call a clitic that means to say it's not so integrated w with the with the actual noun and in that respect it, it, it means that this stress remains in its original position you don't say tamiz it because typically stress occurs on the, on the syllable before the, the penultimate syllable but here you don't, you don't do that so you see that the stress remains in the same position so um, I think all I, I just need to, to summarize to say that when therefore by looking at that construction with a a noun which is a, a, a an adjective which is a loan word you see that um, when you add sorry when you add an uh, to a, an adjective like this it, it has the status of a clitic but when you add it to a noun it has a status of a suffix so I think um, uh, this in general is and really what I want to sort of the point I want to make because I think so, if you haven't done Ara Aramaic or ne haven't wor worked on a Nina Daleks uh, before I mean perhaps some of these points are, are a bit too detailed for you but I think the main point I want to make is that it's how important it is to look at all the subtleties of syntax is that you uh, and the it's very important to to see how constructions can have lots of different variant forms and they don't always have the um, uh, necessarily the, 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 there's there's far more complexity in syntax than, than you might imagine and in fact the complexity is not in in anything mathematical which perhaps generative grammarians might might, might present complexity is in the range of different constructions that are used um, I think I'd just sort of say that rather ge gen gen generically um, but uh, uh, and it's it, it, I, I just very exciting to, 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 to explore all the various constructions but 
let's now look at word order which is a particularly interesting area of, 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 of the Nina Darlings now first of all let's look at the this phenomenon known as the copula now I, I briefly mentioned this I think yesterday because I, I didn't have uh, I think much time to, to talk about this but um, the um, in the Nina Daleks the, the ver where in English we would have the verb <coughs> be like your uncle is our neighbour Nina Daleks express this by a, a clitic particle known as the copula so this is from the Barua dialect Marmuk Shwawanile um, um, Marmuk your uncle is our neighbour the is is expressed by this ile it's the third masculine singular copula now that uh, would be as you see it is a clitic on the on the predicate uh, it is the equivalent to the, the part of the sentence that comes after the verb to be um, now your uncle is hungry mamuch kapinele now here this kapina is the word for hungry and ile is the copula and in this case we have an e a vowel and the a and the i contract to e so mamuch kapinele uh, and so the copula is on the predicate hungry um, the predicate being essentially the, the main focus of the message we could say it's the main new information um, uh, yeah there are some dialects particularly in the, the, the Iraq the Christ, these essentially Christian dialects uh, Iraq and also across to Christian Ulmi which when you have a when you say things like your uncle is <coughs> my neighbour when you you're not actually using an adjective in the predicate you're actually having a noun in the predicate and you're actually what we call identifying somebody um, identif your uncle is my neighbour in, in other words there's a you're identifying your uncle with my neighbour it's called identificatory or equative clauses in such cases you sometimes can put the copula before the, the predicate which sounds rather unusual, but uh, be, but this 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 is not found in in the Jewish dialects, only, only in the Christian dialects. You say "Mamuch ile shwawan," your uncle is our neighbour. Um, now, um, as in all aspects of Nina, you also have to look at languages in contact to understand what's happening, and in fact what seems to be happening is that the uh, the fact is if you look at Kurdish if you look at uh, even the Arabic dialects in this, this area they all express a copula by a clitic which is added to the predicate but there are a group of Kurdish dialects in, in Iraq which actually have a they put the copula before the predicate and this does seem to be the, the explanation why we have this construction in these Nina dialects in that area um, but I think I'll just leave it as that now an interesting fact is that in many of the dialects in, in the Christian dialects of Iraq you have this what we call the copula can move around the clause according to where the focus is so if uh, um, I mean, this, the, if you were to say something like, um, you know, if I said to you, my son is your neighbour, and then you corrected me and said, no, your uncle is our neighbour. In other words, um, you're putting focus, what's known as contrastive focus, on the subject. Um, you would move that copula onto the subject you say ma mochile shwawan and similarly if I said my son is hungry and you would say no my uncle is hungry you'd move the copula onto the subject ma mochile pina so 
um, there is a, a movability of the copula in the Barawa diet according to where the focus is but if you take the transab dialect um, the uh, um, you will find that uh, you have uh, it's a clitic copulas there as well, the Jewish transab dialect, but they are very fixed on the predicate. So you say things like Shwawan Tujariye, our neighbour is a merchant. Shwawan Tujariye. Tujar is a, a loan through Kurdish from Arabic ultimately. Shwawan uh, Jihyaye, our neighbour is tired. And this, they have the form Ye uh, as the copula. Um, but if you were to put focus on the subject, uh, our neighbour is a merchant, you wouldn't move the copula in these dialects. So you'd say, Shwawan Tujariye, or Shwawan Jihyaye. You wouldn't move that copula onto the focus subject. So that is a, a difference between the Transab dialects and the Christian dialects. Um, the 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 the, the, the dialects such as Barwa, so, uh, the Christian dialects in that area. So that is sort of a subtle, a, a, a small but interesting difference in the syntax of the word order of of, of the copula. Um, now, uh, yeah. Um, now, if you um, want to negate, then what do you do with negation? How to sort of say not? Uh, now, in in the, in in the Nina dialects, the negative particle la, which is a is a common Semitic negative particle. But if you want to negate a copula in in most Nina dialects, you typically com combine la with a copula, like ile, the third masculine singular, and you contract, like in Barwa, to lele, lele. But what's interesting is that this. Um, this copula, the, the negative copula, la ile, lele, is put before the predicate. So le, you say, babi lele lacha. So in this respect, the la is behaving a bit like, if you go in Barwa dai, it's a bit like these focus constructions, ma mochile, shwawa. And you, you put the copula if you like move it before the predicate because you're putting more focus on that element marmuch than schwawan now in some respects one could say that this is the same here fabi lele lacha because in fact the, the most focused item in a negative clause is typically the negative particle you, you typically use a, a a negative con uh, clause when you actually I'm assuming that you think that my father is here and I'm what I, my main point of my of what I say is I want to deny that assumption so that therefore the la has particular focus and this is expressed by the fact that the copula is, is moved on to it um, now the J Jewish transab dialects actually uh, they just as they don't move the copula um, you know, onto a focused item like a subject, they, when they negate the, 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 the copula, they, the negation simply put, is put onto the copula at the end of the clause. So you say, Tati lacha lai, my father, this is the Jewish Sulamania, my father is not here. Tati, my father, lacha here. Lie, not ye. This is the copular element, ye or ye. Or ye. So, tati lacha lai. So, you don't move, just as you don't move the copula in other respects, you don't move it even in negative clauses. Now, <coughs> what about word order of, of, uh, or, of clauses in general? Um, the, um, uh, in, a, in a verbal clause now uh, m most of the Christian Nina dialects have a essentially a, 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 the normal word order is you put you have subject 
verb object. So you would uh, say things like Schwawan bid achil lachma. So you'd say um, our neighbour will eat bread. So Schwawan again, we, we keep having this word Schwawan. The an, by the way, is of course is the is the suffix ex- first plural suffix our Schwawa. Schwawa is neighbour. Schwawan our neighbour. Bid achil lachma will eat bread. Yeah, so so subject verb object. You notice achil this bid is the future particle. It it historically comes from bye de wants to and it gets contracted to bid and sometimes gets contracted even further to b. This is what's known in linguistics as grammaticalization where you get a essentially a, a lexical verb to want which starts being used starts develops into a grammatical particle a future marker and, and this is a, a classic case of grammaticalization uh, and but the crucial point here is we've got lachma the, the word for bread which comes after after the verb and you remember um, but if you take a, a, a transab dialect transab dialects are have a basic word order of subject object verb s o v so you'd say schwa schwa wan uh our neighbor will eat bread schwa wan lachma khil this is how they would say the same sentence in jewish sulamania crucially with the object before the verb um, now first of all let's look at this khil you notice you, you haven't got bid achil you haven't got any uh, we haven't got here any kind of um, future particle we just have this k now k uh, if you remember from yesterday k is k or ki it are, uh, is a particle which is put before a an indicative present verb ki partil is the basic form um, and khul is simply a contraction of achil and so it's historically something like ki achil it's contracted to khil but in these dialects the, this khil can be used for the present or the future whereas in in Barwai, you have a special particle for the future now as you can expect this is, ex- can be explained by looking at languages in contact in that in the region where the Barawa dialect was spoken up in the very far north of Iran near Ahmadiyya on the Turkish border the, 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 the language in contact is a form of Kurdish known as Kurmanji Kurdish which, in which they, in Kurmanji Kurdish you have particles to express the future and, uh, and interestingly in many dialects it, they have a form in Kurmanji which sounds like but it has be be for example is a kind of, that, that, that part is, can be used whereas in this region in the, in the Sulaymaniyah for example where today they speak a form of Kurdish known as Sorani Kurdish or sometimes referred to as Central Kurdish they, there is no distinction between a present or, and future verb so it's, it's actually languages in contact can explain a lot um, so you know this shows you the importance of if you have a phenomenon in in a language uh, it's very important to look at its linguistic context now if we go back to the the general word order this again is is kind of explained by language context because um, we have here in Sulaymaniyah uh, the if you look <coughs> at Sorani Kurdish the basic word order is subject o- object verb so you have the verb at the end of the clause in Kurdish and so the, the, this Jewish Transab dialect is expressing is showing a greater it's showing a, a, a convergence or, or, or coming close to the syntactic <laughs> patterns of, the, of, of, of Sorani Kurdish now the interesting thing is that 
the contact lang- language with Borwar, Kurmanji Kurdish, also has a, a basic word order of subject object verb. Uh, so one may expect that, you know, why is it that this dialect has become subject object verb, whereas the Borowa dialect is still essentially a subject verb object? Well, uh, the basic point is that this dialect, this, this Jewish Chazab dialect, has gone closer to the syntax of Kurdish than that, than the and the Barwa dialect and, and this is a sort of general phenomenon of the dialects that some get closer to the language in contact of, than, than others so this is why you'll find a, a great diversity in the degree of the, in the dialects bec- and one of the, the, ex- the factors that explain this diversity is the different degrees of convergence with the languages in contact some are more conservative some are more have converged more um, um, yeah now I've said that the basic construction basically has subject verb object in Barwar but subject object verb in Jewish Sulamania but if if you instead of having an object you have what we call a prepositional phrase um, like in Bit tafkach bishwawan. We will meet our neighbour. Bit is the future particle. Tafkach is a verb present is a a part or present stem <coughs> verb plus the second um, first sorry the first plural ending ach we. So we shall meet. Bit tafkach. The firm tafkach is actually a loan from Arabic. Tafaka in Arabic, which has become, uh, I mean, in Arabic, the t- the you know the the uh, the t is uh, is actually a, ultimately an infix of the particle uh, iftala, but it's it's become a root, rad- kind of radical in 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 nida. Bitafka um, bishwawa. You have a preposition, like the actual. This verb takes a prepositional complement. So, <coughs> but the point here is that you see the prepositional complement of the verb comes after the verb, which you say you may expect because you put an object after the verb in Barwa. However, in Jewish Sulamania, you note that if you have a, a prepositional complement of a verb, it also comes after the verb. So you say, Dokach Bishwawan, we will hold on to our neighbour Dokach we will hold on to Dokach is actually from a root D D W Q so Dwaqa which is actually historically Dvaq or Hebrew Davak to stick to um, but Dokach we will hold on to and this takes a prepositional complement but Bishwawan but that comes after the, the verb whereas if it's an object you would come before the verb so how do we explain that? well the simplest explanation is to the, the most objective explanation and, and probably the most the primary explanation is that what we see in languages in contact because in languages in contact in Kurdish you have precisely this con- type of construction in that the if you have a prepositional contact complement of a verb it comes after the verb um, similarly if you want to express use, sometimes you can use a noun to express what we call the goal or the destination of the verb of movement so you say things like in Barwa we went home Zillan Betha Zillan is the past Stem, the past base, I should say, zil, is ultimately from uh, azal, zil, plus the l suffix lan. As you remember, in most of Nina, the past base takes these l suffixes in both transitive and intransitive verbs. Uh, zilan, but betha, you see, you just home. There's no preposition before it. 
and it's the, so it's a, it's a kind of a single noun expressing the goal or the destination of verbal movement but that com- is coming after the verb zilan beta but the same would apply to Jewish Sulamania the transabdal zilech bela although you'd put the object before the verb in this dialect the goal or destination would go after the verb and again that is that is you have the same construction in, in, in Surani Kurdish. Here, this is the different morphology here. You have zilech, and this ech is what I call the d suffix. That is to say, it is the type of construction you get on a type of suffix you get on the present verb, like tafkech, we just had in the previous example. And that is a characteristic feature of the Jewish transat dialect. You'd have these d suffixes on tra- intransitive past verbs so zilech um, bela now what about negation uh, our neighbor did not eat bread so we have here our friend shwawa this is borrow shwawa again lachile lachma so here you're simply putting the particle la in uh, in front of the mm-hmm. verb. And here we have the past verb. Chil is the past base. This is from the verb achil, but chil because the, the alif gets falls away. And this is in the teal past base. La chil le <coughs> the the L suffix expressing the subject this 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 case a transitive verb lachma so shwawan lachille lachma so shwawan our neighbor did not eat um, bread or um, bread yes now but it's not negation is slightly it's not quite as simple as that you can't simply add a la to any verb to negate it one interesting fact is that in dialects which have a, a, <coughs> a future particle like bid mm-hmm. bid achil he will eat uh, you cannot say la bid achil you cannot simply add a la to the future uh, um, you have to use you have to essentially negate a, a present form of the verb you have to say something like la achil or you can say this is the borrower dialect you, you can say la yachil now in this dialect this the present you know these prefix indicative particles ki or e and ba- in Barwa they have the particle e it seems e is ultimately perhaps a a reduced form of ki um, so and the, so you would say la yachil he will not eat in fact la yachil can mean he doesn't eat present or habitual or he will not eat. It can mean both. So, if you like, the the range of meaning is wider in the negative. Whereas bidachil, he will eat. It can only be used in the positive. Um, uh, if you say something like la bidachil, it would mean something like no, he will eat. Not he will not eat. If you see what I mean? There's a difference. Um, so. Now, in uh, what happens about the, the uh, imperative? Now, w- one thing you learn if you, um, in many Semitic languages, the classical Semitic languages, you, you learn that imperative forms typically are not negated. If you want to negate an imperative, you have to use a, a verbal form. Um, like um, like in Hebrew you say ktol, kill but al tik tol do not do not kill with using a prefix conjugation form now an interesting feature about Nina is that many in fact the majority of dialects you can negate the negative so you can say plot which is the ne- sorry you can negate the imperative <coughs> the plot is the imperative go out uh, but if, if you want to say don't go out and say La plot. So um, now um, there are a few dialects, though, uh, particularly 
Karl Koch is one of these Daleks which are more conservative, you could say, and you can, in which you cannot negate the imperative. So you have to say things like la poltet. This is the this poltet is the present form, parlet the present <coughs> base plus et, which is this is you singular masculine poltet la poltet. Do not go out. So let's say plus, but la poltet. So you have this. Um, and in fact, uh, I mean, the reality is in a, in a language like uh, dialect like Barua, where you have, you can say la plot, you can also say la poltet, la, la poltet, you can say. But if you say la poltet, um, there's a slight difference in meaning. La plot means don't go out now. Uh, like if I saw Maxi going out the door, I'd say to him, la plot. But if I said to somebody, la poltet, it would mean don't go out in the future, slightly in the future, so not immediately now. So um, there, is, there, is, there, is that, there is this, if you like, a greater range of constructions in dialects like Barwa. But um, um, Karakosh is more conservative. Uh, now, uh, this is something I think I didn't get onto because I, I, I ran out of time when I was talking about morphology. But um, there are um, some some dialects in Iraq have this particle la, which looks like the negative, but it's not the negative. It's in fact in origin some kind of copula. Uh, but in the, the dialect to the Jews of Arbel, which is a, Jew, which is a Jewish transab dialect, I mean, if you, if you can all this the la, la the time being, because this is a negative constraint, but if you just said la la keli, it would mean I have spoken. They they take the past base ke li, which is the L suffix first person, uh, I spoke, then add la turn into the present perfect I have spoken Kheli I spoke La Kheli I have spoken so the difference between the perfective and the perfect and and Nina Daleks in in general express the difference between perfective and perfect which again is, a, is quite innovative in, in many Semitic languages don't do that in the classical Semitic languages they would use the a past form to express both the perfective and the perfect. Um, now, but in this sort of the, the Jewish transab dialects in the area of Arbel have this kind of interesting construction of la being combined with the perfective la keli. But um, which is rather confusing because it does sound like the negative. Um, but if you want to negate these clauses, this is the point of this example, is that you would put the negation between the la and the verb. So you say la la keli, which is, I mean, this is just a, some kind of, a, just a point of interest. Um, you wouldn't say la la keli, you say la la keli, um, which, uh, I think perhaps we'll just leave it with that. Uh, yeah. I'm not this particular. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Might. Oh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. There's. Uh, um. This is really just to show that the. Um, uh, if the, um, the, 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 the this is really a, a perfect construction in in in, in the in Jewish Sulaimaniyah where you would have smichai would be this is the a different fo- way of expressing the perfect you have a a, a participle uh, a katila a resultative participle smicha plus the copula that's how they express the perfect in, in, in Jewish Sulaimania. So you say Smirkai, um, it um, it has become red. 
basically. This is the verb smarcha is to become red. So smicha it has become red. Now if you want to negate that, you simply put the negation before smicha, la smicha. But, but if you remember in this dialect normally you'd put when there's a copy you'd put the, the negator on the copula. So um, you would say things like small car lie. So if you want to just make it a, a, if the predicate is an ordinary adjective, you'd say small car, which is the word for red, lie, and you, and the, the negation would go directly on the copula. But if it's a perfect las mi it has it has not become red. Um, you'd put the negating negator before the whole unit not before the copula. Um, yeah, I mean, these, these are some subtleties, some details of syntax which I, I, I gathered together for you, to which is, I realize that perhaps some of these are possibly, you know, the, it's, if you haven't had sort of experience of learning the Nina dialects, but I, I'm, I'm hoping this will kind of give you a, a sense of how exciting these dialects can be. Um, now, in fact, we do have some time left, and I, uh, I could perhaps try and go back over some of the things I missed because I, I, I probably finished talking about the syntax. But are there any, perhaps some questions about um, anything which anything we talked about today, or or anything which we talked about the last two days? Perhaps I'll see whether there's any. You have any spoken uh, very shortly about periphrastic tenses. Yes. Do you want me to say more about that? Perhaps. Yeah. I'll be glad. Yeah, because that's what I missed out. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Yes, on my morphology. Um, uh, let, perhaps I'll go back to the. Let's. let's uh, uh, <coughs> Yeah, we'll just uh, wait for it to, to load. Okay. <coughs> um. Okay, so let me get the... Co- it's a possible role of, of language contact in the development of this complicated... Yeah. Let me just get to that. Perhaps um, yeah, let's let's okay. Let's just go back to the the copula and periphrastic tenses because this is where I didn't have much time to talk before. Basically, the we've talked about the copula. We have these these this is what I call a simple copula. These are essentially are clitics which are added to the predicate. So this is the full paradigm of. Well, let's say, let's say uh, Karakosh and Barwa and you can see that you know, the endings of certainly the first and second person uh, forms of the copy look very much like the so called D suffixes which are added to, to present verb forms um, but in many dialects you also have this other type of copy called the deictic copula which is used really to draw attention to something in, in, in the speech situation. So we say things like hole in Baro, I mean, you know, if, if I want to say hole kapina, he is hungry, it would mean I'll be drawing your attention to it. Look, he is hungry, basically. And karakosh equivalent will be kile, drawing attention. Um, and you have full paradigms of the, of the deity copula. I mean, the copula is something I um, find very interesting. I've been doing a lot of work on that recently. Uh, and I think I briefly 
yesterday said something about the fact that the copula in some dikes like again is the Jewish transab dikes which are always more advanced and they have become completely assimilated to the endings of verbs ye, en, et, a, et or look exactly like, like verbs but let's look at but the just to go look at this area of perfects I mean we have to understand the distinction between a perfective which is a, a past he went in English and a present perfect that he has gone which can express in English a variety of different functions I mean it can mean um, that somehow his it is a, he has gone in the sense that he, it is, he has gone recently and uh, he has, it has some relevance to the present or it, it, it essentially it, without going into the function of, of the perfect the, the perfect has a variety of functions but is equivalent let's say for the time being we'll say equivalent to the English he has gone uh, in fact the, the Nina perfect which we're going to talk about now has a range of very interesting functions many, some of which are not found in in, in English or, or, or European languages but basically the, there is an innovation in the use, of the development of, of of perfects. By the way, in typologically, typically, perfects, present perfects, and progressive forms often are the most innovative forms of verbs. In that, um, it's mainly because typically speakers are more concerned with the present, <laughs> what's happening now, mm -hmm. than the past or the future which is a good philosophy of life I think <laughs> but, uh, therefore they particularly act, verbs expressing what I'm doing at the moment I'm eating, he is eating uh, that's known as a progressive often, certainly Nina you, you, they, you, there were a number of, very, uh, a number of innovative construction to express the progressive similarly with the present perfect he has gone um, or he has pulled you have a series of innovative constructions um, and the perfect is formed by in various ways but one, a, a very common way across m many Nina dialects is to combine a copula with a so called resultative participle, do you remember that if we looked at the and it's worth, worth going back to the paradigm of the various bases, we have katil which is the past base, katila is the resultative participle. Katila is essentially the passive participle with the original definite article, whereas Katil is the passive participle without the definite article. Um, but Karakosh um, expresses the perfect uh, by, ex by prefixing the uh, deictic copula, Kile Grisha. Um, and it would not typically express the perfect by a, a, a an enclitic copula. So, uh, if it's if if they had enclitic copula, it'd be more of an adjectival nature. You know, uh, it is pulled or something. Uh, but Kile Grisha, he has pulled. Um, whereas Barwa can use a clitic copula to express the perfect. So there's lots of subtle differences across the dialects, but the basic construction is a copula with a resultative participle. Now this is a, a feature of of British dialects, um, where they use a, a, a participle plus copula to express perfect, and 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 I think it's quite clear that this is an innovation which developed through contact with with with. with, with with Kurdish, where Nina differs, and the point about language contact is, it's never, it, it's not always exact replication. It's, it is sort of inspiration for a type of construction. Um, and for example, in Karakosh has this use of the deictic copula, which for which there's not really any clear uh, sort of equivalent in, in in Kurdish. I mean, there are deictic constructive features. Construction is like here, here he is, there he is, but they wouldn't typically not use it with the perfect. Um, now, uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, slightly. See if we can talk talk through this quickly. The, the, if you recall, the the point about. Um, um, do you remember we said that in in the Nina dialects there is a um, typically intransitive clauses the in the past the the verb the, the let's, wait, let's go back to construction here we see that the um Yeah, we uh, we we say that see, see that in present in the <coughs> present um, <coughs> verbs like brati baroche garshalu. This is from Jewish Sulamania. The verb in the present, the a. Ah, this is the d suffix. The but the first suffix a ah, agrees with the subject brati. My daughter pulls. Baruche and, and and the lu the l suffix is a, is agrees with the object. So my daughter pulls the friends. Baruch So garsha lu is agreeing with the friends, the the object. But in the past stem you get the you get that the, it, it, there's, there's a reversal of roles. So you get baruche brati gershalu the friends now the subject pulled my daughter Gersha the R now is referring to the object not the subject and the Lu is referring to the subject so you've got those reversal of roles and this is known as the uh, this is typically an ergative construction because as we saw in also in this dialect if you have an intransitive verb Brati Smicha in the past that A is agreeing with the intransitive subject so the A is Agreeing with the object in the transitive clause or the intransitive subject uh, in 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 an intransitive clause, and that is that that alignment of intransitive subject with object is a, is the is the typical ergative type of construction. But the point I want to make is that um, in the in these periphrastic perfect constructions like kile grisha grishele in most Nina dialects they they are I haven't got actually a full example here but basically they, they're not ergative so you want to say you know the man pulled the woman I mean the, this this copula and the participle would be agreeing sorry the man has pulled the woman you know the the copula would be agreeing with the subject and the and the and the Participle would be agreeing with the subject, so it would be a normal, th what we call a nominative accusative construction. Um, however, and which, by the way, is not what you got to get in Kurdish. Typically, I mean, <coughs> typically Kurdish, which have these periphrastic perfects, typically in Kurdish, a normal construction. I mean, there are lots of Kurdish dialects, and there's all slight variations, but basically. Kurdish would use an ergative construction also for the periphrastic perfect. Mm -hmm. So in this respect we say that the majority of Nina dialects have not converged so much with Kurdish. <coughs> um, however, when you start getting to the trans dialects, you get more convergence. Uh, and um, I... Uh, perhaps a, yeah, it, it's a slightly complicated case is this uh, what you get in Jewish Sulamania so you get a construction like the man has pulled the woman Ogora Bachtake Grishtavye so here you get a kind of a half con half sort of ergative construction so Ogora is the ma that man or we could say the man is a sort of anaphoric construction Bachta ke is the woman this is the definite article here okay. and Bachta is a by the way the word for woman in 
in Nina Daleks is Bachta or Bachta, which is a very unique to the Nina Dalek. Uh, and this is rather complicated looking construction. Is Grishta is the is a resultative participle, but it's actually agreeing with the feminine object. Yes, Grishta. Av is the is a pro is a is actually a pronoun pronominal suffix feminine agreeing with the object. Sure. But yay, the copula is masculine agreeing with the subject. So we, the, the participle is agreeing with the with the with the object, but the copula is agreeing with the with the with the with the subject. So we've got a sort of a, a half sort of um, convergence with Kurdish there because what in Kurdish what would happen would be that the both the participle and the copula would agree with the object. Now by the time we get into Iran, into Jewish Sanandaj for example, or Jewish the, the Daleks, the Transab Daleks of Iran, you get a complete convergence in that you the, the, the um, participle and the copula would agree with the the object. So um, if, if this was the dialect of Jewish Sanandaj, you would say Ogora Bachta Ke Grishtaya. You wouldn't have the Av. You would say Grishta, feminine that resulted in participle, Ya. F- third feminine singular copula agreeing with the object, although the subject is. And no ill suffix. No ill suffix. Mm. Green. Uh, but, uh, well, well, there are ill suffixes in certain contexts. Um, and this, there is none. Yeah, I mean, it's a very complicated story. So, but um, the, the main point is that expressing the perfect with this periphrastic resultative participle was copula. Uh, in the main, bo- main group of Nina dialects, it's, it's, it's nominative accusative, it's not ergative. But in the transab dialects, you have this. Um, you have ergativity in the perfect constructions, but in Jewish Sulaimania, which is, it, 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 it's, you could say, is on the, not quite on the periphery of, of, the, of, of the Nina group of dialects, it's, it's, it's sort of, I mean, you've got the, the periphery on, in Western Iran, which is Jewish Sanandaj and Jewish Karend, and they are c- completely converged with Kurdish. Jewish Sulaimania is in Iraq. So, uh, it's not. It's a lesser degree of convergence with Kurdish, but it's there is a, a, there is some degree of convergence. Yeah, it's it is. Um, oh, here we are. His his son and died. Oh, Gora Bachta That would be the equivalent in, in son and died. Uh, with the feminine copula agreeing with the the object. Exactly what you're getting, Kurdi. Yeah, I think perhaps we might, since we, uh, yeah. So just um, this is a this is the construction Arbella is mentioning. You take the past form Grushle, he pulled. This is the past stem plus le, the l suffix expressing the subject. And you put a la at the front to express the per- present perfect. He has pulled. La grishle. And each dax is a slightly different form of, of construction. Our bell has simply the past plus la. There's a dialect called bidyal, which is spoken only by about three or four people today. So <laughs> it's a little village up in the far north of Iraq. But they form a construction by essentially a resultative participle but combined with la so la grisha he has pulled la grishta la grishe these are feminine and plural participles uh, then you start adding a copula ending for the first and second person la grisha with but so in this case it's la plus resultative participle when hmm? does this la come etymologically yeah, this it seems to be essentially a development of a a copula, third feminine singular copula, feminine singular. Like illa. 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 Yeah, 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 basically. That's what I thought. Uh, 
and uh, yeah what else have we got here uh, yeah I mean there's all kinds of variations I mean perhaps since we're coming to the end of I but I'll, um, basically every Nina Daleks is slightly different and given that there's 150 Daleks or more you, you can imagine the, 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 the diversity in them uh, but I mean I've been trying to sort of give you a flavour of the, of the diversity of these Daleks and also give you a flavour of how for a linguist how exciting they can be and really to, to say that um, I very much hope that you know I can inspire st students to to work on these dialects because the, we do need more people to work on them because we they are uh, they're very much endangered now and we still need some basic documentation work going done on them. Um, good, so I think I'll leave it there because we've, we've basically come to the end of our time. Um, but I mean, are there, do you have any any questions on any, on anything you want to ask me while we're here? Thanks, eh? Uh, when I worked in Western Georgia with informants, uh, I noticed that uh, about progressive, uh, that some of them express progressive with this big tala construction. Yeah. And These are what, from Kanda? No, 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 west of Georgia. It's in Senaki. It's, it's sort right. of unexplored area. Right. And uh, others uh, from the same dialect express it with a sort of cattle or key cattle construction. Mm. And I, I uh, interpreted it as uh, some of them are losing this big tala. But after your lecture, it seems uh, that the uh, is more archaic. Yeah. Key cartel, yeah. 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 Big Tali is innovative, yeah? Yes, it would seem so. Oh, I mean, the point Not is that... Uh, it really is depending on where the Nina dialects are, because this Big Tala, this is, by the way, the preposition in, the locative preposition in plus infinitive, so Bittalele, he is in killing. Yes, yes. He is. He is. That's the way of expressing the progressive. Now, um, I mean, I, I think it's. I, I believe you know that this Bittalele has entered the Nina dialects through contact. Uh, I used to think it was Turkish, but it. it there are reasons to believe it's, it was not uh, Turkish uh, because. Although in standard t t Turkish of the of modern Turkey, I mean, it's, you get constructions like this with infinitive, uh, makta sun, you know. I, um, but uh, in the Turkic varieties of Turkic spoken in Eastern Turkey and in Western Iran, for example, it's not used. Uh, but it's um, but. It, but it is certainly the basic construction in Eastern Armenian, and this is what makes me think now that perhaps it may be an influence of Eastern Armenian. Uh, the dialect I'm talking about comes from mm, uh, the mountains. It's like Tiare, close to Tiare. Which which town is this? It's uh, Tal. Tal, all right. Yeah, yeah. And it could, I think certainly in that sort of area, you would, and also Tiare, you would. Um, uh, well, for a progressive, you'd expect, um, depending what verb, what lexical verb you're talking about, in, in Tiari area, for so-called psych verbs, verbs of, you know, like psychological, knowing or wanting or seeing, perceptual verbs, you, you tend not to use the bit for. Of course, yeah. uh, Whereas in Urmi, which in Urmi you do. So it may be, I don't know whether it's an issue of difficult, different yes, lexical verbs. Yes, they may be influenced verbs. by Urmi because uh, in Urmi is very, you know, mm. influential. It's like good English. I know, I see, I love, mm. exactly. love progressive. But, you know, in Urmi you do use progressive even for those verbs, but not in Tiari or mm -hmm. on the... Yeah, I see. So I don't know, it may be different lexical verbs, or it may be simply some kind of... I don't know whether there's any development taking place through language contact, I don't know. But, uh, good. So, it was a pleasure to uh, spend the, the last, last three days talking to you. I realised I had more to say than I had time to. But, um, 
I hope if you're interested, you can uh, um, you can uh, you know continue your studies in Nina. I mean, really, I was giving a taste rather than teaching you Nina dialect. Mm-hmm. I was giving a taste. Um, you you will be able to find me on 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 the, on the website if you want. If you want to contact me, please feel free. Just type my name into Google, and you'll find me my website in Cambridge. And I'll be very happy to hear from you if you want to have further. I want to pursue this field. <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, as I say, we are looking for more students in this field. Very much. Good. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Julie, for the use of your computer. <laughs> this wouldn't have. These lectures would not take place without without you. So, I'll. Uh,